I had just clocked into work. I had put on my matching white shirt, white pants, red hat, and red apron. It was one of the first jobs that I had ever worked in high school. I was 16 years old, and I will never forget clocking into that shift. It was lunchtime. People were starting to get hungry, and my role that day was to take people's orders, to greet them with a big smile on my face, and to read back to them my order. I was a super eager, responsible 16-year-old, and I honestly loved my job. It gave me a lot of life, interacting with people, making their day, making them smile. I was all about it. But it was lunchtime and people were starting to get hungry. And I came in earlier to my shift before the rest of the employees were actually scheduled that day to clock in. So it was just me manning the register. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a massive lunch rush was about to take place. The line was out the door. It was a lunch rush that we weren't expecting, but there's literally nothing that I could do than smile and politely take people's orders. So I was doing my best to do things in an efficient way while also maintaining the high quality that I knew my manager and company expected of me. So I greeted every customer. I repeated back their order. I was smiling. I was representing the company well. And I will never forget Off into the distance, I see a gentleman and I can see his frustration building and he is not happy. His son was with him and he was hungry and I could hear him starting to complain as I am taking the other customers in front of him's order and he steps up and he looks at me and there's no smile on his face that is to be greeted by my enthusiasm and my smile, but instead he just starts to bicker. And the words that came out of his mouth surprised me, and I will never forget this moment. He looked at me straight in the eye while I'm smiling, and he has a frown on his face. He said to me, you will never get anywhere in life. Thankfully, the story doesn't end there. And on today's episode of the Rainmaker Family Show, I'm going to share with you how I went from a fast food worker to making a list of the fastest growing companies in America. This gentleman had just said to me, you are never going to get anywhere in life. And as I'm smiling, like completely shocked that a stranger could say such cruel words to me, I begin to start holding back tears. Like there's literally nothing I can do other than smile, politely do my job. But while I'm doing that, I am fighting back tears like you could see it. Like I have a hard time hiding my expressions and there's no way that everybody in that room knew that I was literally about to burst into tears. And I simply took his order as best as I could, as quickly as I could. I even offered for the gentleman to speak to my manager if he had any issues, but there's nothing that I could do other than take his order as effectively and efficiently as possible which I did do. And to be honest, I was completely deflated. Like I wanted to quit. I wanted to go run in a corner and like wipe away probably at the time my runny mascara that was coming down my face. I was so embarrassed. I mean, you can imagine as a 16 year old being told by somebody older than you, like you're never going to get anywhere in life. And I think what made all matters worse for me as well is that this gentleman was with his son who is probably my age. And I remember looking at the gentleman who made this comment to me and looking over at his son that was with him. And he, his son couldn't even make eye contact with me. Like he was so embarrassed by the comment that his dad had just made. And I had a moment of empathy for his son because I can imagine that if he was willing to say those words to a stranger out in public, I'm sure there are things going on behind the scenes that I wasn't even aware of. So I had this moment of empathy and sympathy for his son, but I also was just like heartbroken and sad on my own. And I will never forget, I I took his order and of course he goes off and is grumbling and probably like I try not to make eye contact anymore with him because I'm literally about to burst into tears and I take a few more orders and I'm like trying to pat my eyes, trying to be like confident and smile through it all. Uh, But I will never forget 
this woman with blonde hair and blue eyes steps up to the counter. And I'm still like shaken from the incident that just happened. Instead, this woman looks me right in the eyes. She looks me right in the eyes and she saw my name tag and she said this by name. She said, Chelsea, you are doing an amazing job. Chelsea, you are doing an amazing job. As a 16-year-old, again, I'm like trying to wipe back tears again. And I just said, thank you. (laughs) But I think that there are so many times in life we have people who speak and say horrible things to us, maybe out loud or maybe in silent, or we can just tell by the way that they're responding to us with their body language that they don't approve, that they don't agree, that they think that we're a little crazy for choosing the path that we're on. And I think And I know that there will always be those kinds of people in the world that want to say you're never going to get anywhere, that you're crazy, that uh, I don't agree with you. And they're just going to be like the haters and the naysayers. There will always be those kinds of people. But there is an opportunity to be the people that call the gold out in others, that speak identity, that say, hey, I see this dream you have and I think you can accomplish it and I'm going to be your cheerleader just like the woman did for me. She called me by name. Just like the woman did for me. She called me by name. She said, Chelsea, you are doing an amazing job. And I'm here to tell you today that you are doing an amazing job. And the story was brought to mind um, when leading up to knowing that we were going to receive the Inc. 5000 Award. We had applied. It was this vigorous process. We had been told Hey, you like you, um, you are on the list. You made the list, which was a really big honor and a really big deal. And as we move closer to announcing to you and to our team and to everyone else that we had make the, made the Inc. 5000 list, I realized that there's always temptation to listen to the negative what if people and how whether we realize it or not, sometimes their words affect our decision making more than we realize it. Or you can surround yourself with people who are going to lift you up, who are going to encourage you. And I just, in that moment, back as a 16-year-old, I remember coming home and being like, I'm not going to listen to this guy. I know that I am capable of doing big things. And I am going to go out and do big things. Like, I refuse to play it small. I refuse to listen to this guy's voice in my head. And I think that there are too many mamas. I think there are too many women who just want to play it small. You think that your dreams and your ideas and your ambitions are for like later in life or therefore when you have this or when you have more money or when you're smarter, or when you have this qualification. And I'm here to tell you, you can start putting in the time and putting in the effort now. And I want to challenge you, like, who are you listening to in your life? The reality is there's always going to be people who have negative things to say that are going to see the world as this negative spiraling down like cycle, or there's going to be people who call you by name and who call you up. And as I was reflecting on winning this award, we often talk about in the Rainmaker world our seven levels deep. Why? This is an exercise we do on day one of our Rainmaker challenge and Honestly, like the success stories that we have in our group, like every single one of those success stories are people who took this exercise seriously and have it as a momentum that propels them forward when walls come up, when things come up in life that want to hold you back or when those negative voices come in, this is what propels you forward. And I'm recording this podcast and I record podcasts every single week and I show up on social media every single week. Honestly, because I remember that woman in my life who called me my name and called me up and encouraged me. And now where I'm at in business, like I know that I'm supposed to be that woman for you. I'm supposed to be that woman for other mamas, for other entrepreneurs who need somebody in their corner cheering them on when everybody else around them has negative negative thought patterns, negative voices, and it's just saying like, you can't do it. I don't believe in you. I know that I'm called to be the person that does champion you. And I'll be honest, like I didn't want the microphone. I didn't want to be on the stage. I mean, as we're recording this podcast, like I'm literally using a microphone to speak into. And as my social media account has grown and I have connected with so many of you, like initially when I first started out, like that was not what I was chasing. That was not what I wanted to do. I didn't see myself 
as being someone who could encourage others. I didn't see myself worthy of success. I had major imposter syndrome, but I know as I revisit my seven levels deep, I am reminded of the power of words. And I'm reminded about the things that make me feel alive. And part of that is encouraging you. So I'm going to read you the seven levels deep. Um, it kind of, you go through these seven levels, you write a sentence and then you go deeper and you go deeper. And this is kind of where I arrived in all of it. So it's level seven deep. We call it the heavy revy, heavy revelation. And it says being an entrepreneur. So the whole question is like, why do you want to be an entrepreneur? And this is like seven levels deep as to why I want to be an entrepreneur. And this is what I want to read right now. Being an entrepreneur pushed me into a different story and created true transformation. I feel like I've always been wired to set people free, but for so many years that was bottled up and held back. Entrepreneurship is believing for the something more when others won't. I'm determined and I will show our boys, our community, and everyone I come in contact with that you can thrive, that freedom is available in all areas of life. And that is why I show up every single day on some kind of platform, whether it's a podcast that was recorded, showing up in our Facebook group, showing up on Instagram, like that is why I show up is because I believe that freedom is available in all areas of your life. And I go back to this all the time because there are days that I don't want to record a podcast there are days that my voice is a little cracky like it is today. There are days where I do experience some imposter syndrome and I question like, do people really want to hear what I have to say? Like, I think every content creator, every person who is actively putting content out there and hitting publish on things, I think everybody at times feels like, why am I doing this? Like you're reevaluating, at least for me. And I am committed to showing up for you and for your breakthrough. Because I experienced as a young 16-year-old what it was like. And I, obviously, I experienced it before too. But this story just kind of ties in. Like I experienced it as a 16-year-old when a complete stranger just wanted to tear me down. And he did in an instant. Like I was wiping away tears. Like I wanted to go hide in a corner. And then on the flip side, I experienced in an instant a woman looking me straight in the eyes calling me by name and saying like, you are doing an amazing job. And she has transformed my life forever. I, I don't know who this woman is. I barely remember. I remember some details of her face, but not the full picture, but she transformed my life forever. And whether you and I ever get to meet in person or have any interaction, like I know that I'm here as best I can to show up and to transform your life. And I want to encourage you like, and challenge you, like, who are the voices that you are listening to? Are they the negative voices? Are the people that are calling you up and encourage you that freedom is available, that you can have a beautiful family life, and you can have a beautiful business, and you can figure out how to create systems and structure to have both. Like, I don't, I don't believe that you, you have to, like, one needs to suffer over the other. I think, of course, there are seasons where you might be pushing hard in your business and you're not able to spend as much time with your family or you might be like spending more intentional time with your kids and your business like you're not able to invest as much I totally know that there are seasons and I've had those too but I just believe that you can have this beautiful life that you can create that you can set your own hours you can have leverage in your life and your business and so I hope I hope today's podcast encourages you to keep going, whatever those dreams are, whatever your goal is, like you will see those dreams come true if you keep putting in the work, keep putting the time, keep following the systems. If you don't have a mentor, get a mentor that can call you up. You know, we say this in our Rainmaker Challenge, we say success isn't luck, success is a choice. And I think some people aren't willing to choose into what success looks like. They take the easy way out. They give up too easily. Life circumstance happens and they're just like, oh, this didn't, this didn't turn out the way I wanted. So I'm just going to complete, I'm just going to quit entirely. They're not willing to crunch the numbers, to, to invest when it's scary, to push past those fear walls. Those are all things that happen that I see over and over and over again. And it's not an overnight success. Stephen and I didn't make the Inc. 5000 list of, of the 
fastest growing companies in America overnight. It took time. It took dedication. There are a lot of like late nights and tears. There are a lot of like, we're betting the farm on this whole Facebook ad company because I hope that it works out for this launch. There's been times where like, oh no, that product didn't go the way we wanted, but we decided that we were committed to the process and we were committed to the transformation because entrepreneurship has changed our lives. So just as that woman said to me many, many years ago, looked me straight in the eye, called me by name, I'm going to do the same thing that she did with me to you. And that is you are doing an amazing job. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. Hey, if you are not a part of our Rainmaker Mastermind, we have a new opportunity for you to book a one-on-one strategy call with one of our Rainmaker coaches. If you want to get a call with them, see if it's a good fit for you to work with us to build a business that allows you to have time freedom and financial freedom, you can get that call at makeitrainmama.com slash podcast. That's makeitrainmama, M-O-M-M-A dot com slash podcast.